welcome to my studio. Today we're working on our bubbling cauldron and I always have one project that is my favorite and this is this one this year. It is so much fun. It is simple to do and really inexpensive. So come on and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is look for a cauldron and it's really funny because some years there's a bunch of cauldrons and some years there is none. And I found my bigger cauldrons at the thrift stores and my smaller one I found at Walmart. But I noticed like at home store had a bunch of cauldrons, Target, different places like that. So look for them there. Also look for them when they're on clearance after the holidays are over. So you can use it for next year. Um, I wanted to talk to you something that I would really love to do. I've got one cauldron that's even bigger than this. I would like to drill a hole in the side and put in a plastic pipe and run it up or tubing and run it up to the bubbles up to the top and leave it open so that I could put my fog machine and have it come out. I think that would be really cool. But you also could do the lights or you could have the fog machine just sitting behind it and it just kind of oozing out. So there's a lot of different things you can do with that. Now if you have one that's small enough you can use a paper plate. This one is just a little bit bigger than a paper plate size so we're going to have to make a covering with some cardboard. I did find a paper plate that was big enough and I think I'm going to go ahead and use that. Now if you didn't, you would simply find a big enough piece of cardboard and just trace your circle all the way around and cut that out with your scissors and that's what I ended up doing even with the paper plates for the small ones. Just cut that out and you can glue that on. You could glue it on with some E6000 or you could even hot glue that because we're going to put some stuff over the top of it so it shouldn't come out. But before we glue that on, after you cut that out, we want to secure it. So anchor it. So we're going to uh, fill it up with sand or rocks or something kind of sturdy first so that it is not top heavy. I found some gravel that I was going to use and I probably could have used half of that. So you want to think about <laughs> how heavy it is, where you want to store it and things like that. So that may help determine how much rock you want to put on it. And then I just stuffed it full because you don't want your sand or your rocks moving around. This is just paper. You can use newspaper. You can use plastic sacks. You can use whatever you wanted to with that. That's not a big deal at all. You just want to secure it nice and tight. And then, after we get that done, we're going to go ahead and put on our paper plate here. And I'm going to put it on the plate. You could put it on the um, cauldron if you wanted. Unfortunately, I'm right in the middle of reloading a glue gun. That's not good. A glue stick. So we don't want that to cool off and I'm using the high setting so that we have more time to move this around and set it. And then we're just going to put it right onto our cauldron and give that a minute to set up and then we'll start making our bubbles. So we're going to make our bubbles and what we're going to use is different sizes of styrofoam balls. And again, I found mine at the thrift store. Always keep your eyes open for that. There's a smaller set at Dollar Tree because styrofoam can be real expensive. So we've got some different size and we're going to take our serrated knife and we're just going to cut these in half. And they don't have to be perfect. They can be one side bigger than the other, that's okay. But the making them 
in half makes them sit down and look like they're creating our bubbles. So I have one that big. I don't want any more that big. So we want to kind of think about the sizes that we want. It doesn't take a lot as you can already see. And we may just use half of one size like that guy. Because that's kind of three big bubbles. And so I think I'm going to do some smaller bubbles here and then I'm also going to add some complete little circles of styrofoam balls and I didn't have any little styrofoam like that so I'm going to use some uh, filler that you put into your flower arrangements and we'll coat that as we're going. So we'll kind of look for that or there's some that size. And then what we're going to do after we've kind of got how we like them kind of on our um, cauldron is we're going to use our glue gun at the low temp because it will melt your styrofoam balls and we're just going to glue them onto the plate. Now I do like this because this plate kind of curves down and goes into the cauldron. But if you have one that's on top, like I do over here, that's fine too. This one is kind of down a little bit. There is no right or wrong on those, so don't worry about that. But just go ahead and get all of your bubbles going and we'll pick it up from there. These were the little base fillers that we found at Dollar Tree this year and I'm going to use just the black because they'll be easier to cover up with the filling but they've got some different sizes and I'll spread those around once we get our frosting done. For our frosting we're going to be using silicone and this is Alex Plus and you want to make sure that this says white not clear there is a big difference in that so um, we want to make sure that we do do it with the white because that just makes the color stand out if you want to do ooey gooey you could try the clear um, there is a big difference with guns I have one that I use at home and it was so hard and we bought one we now sell these at mariamjoy.com and I tease my husband that they work like butter so and all you do is cut off the top once you have it in the gun and I'll show you how we seal that back up in a minute we're just going to pour a certain amount we'll kind of show you here in a second into our bucket This caulking gun is just so much easier to squeeze and then to pull back on it. It is a little bit different. You don't squeeze it and pull back when you're done. You just pull straight back. And it, depending on how big this is, is how much you want to add or how much the stuff you want to use and what size. So it's you're going to kind of have to play it by... Uh, ear and kind of see you know um, what how much you think you need now we are going to add color to it and we are going to add a little bit of water to it to simply seal this I just take some saran wrap or a plastic bag and a rubber band and I just put it on really really tight I have had this literally for months at a time almost a year and it still worked just fine if you had anything it might be hard just at the very beginning and that would be it but you can use that later on and not have to worry about it going bad so I well, picked up some whisk and some um, scrapers and I went to the dollar store or Walmart and these stay in my craft room they did not go back to my kitchen so that they're only used for just that. 
And what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of color and a little bit of water. And I'm going to start with a little bit of water. You'd rather have too little of water than too much. We want it liquid enough that it pours, if that kind of makes sense. And at first you're going to kind of think that it's not working together and it's not going to mix and we may need to switch over to our spatula here while it's still a little bit thicker and work it that way. Let me do that. And then after we get it thin enough, we can do the color and kind of use our little whipping tools. So I'm going to set that down here. And I suggest that you put some paper down so that you don't get this all over everything. Or if you have some big aluminum throwaway pans or something like that, you can use that on them. But we're starting to get a little bit better consistency here. And we want it just smooth enough that it run down the sides. That's kind of our goal here. And if you have a big one, I used about half of the tube on this one, and I think I'll probably have to do a second batch, but we'll kind of look at it here in a minute. And I'm going to whisk this just a little bit more, and we'll start with our color. For our base color, I tried alcohol dyes and ink dyes and all kinds of different things. And I found that the food coloring works the best because it's more concentrated. And you want the concentrated gel. You don't want the liquid. And the one I used before, I used a leaf green. And I'm going to try this one just says green. It looked a little bit more lime on the top, but I don't think so. And we get this real fun green and this one is coming out a little bit more lime green and that's okay and we've want to make sure we get our white good here and we want to kind of see how it works I'm going to start using some of these balls these fillers and see how well they are coated and that's pretty good that's not too much I think I want to go a little bit more green though and you could leave it a little bit swirly if you want to but we're gonna add some other colors to it you don't have to I'm gonna add some alcohol dyes to mine that's totally a personal opinion and some glitter everything's better with glitter And when we're working on our cauldron as a dark surface, so you really want a light green. You don't want a dark green because it's going to show better. So I've got those two guys done here. And what we're going to do with those guys is we're going to add them, kind of fill in on the other parts of our bubbles here. I think I need to go just a tad bit more water. You can see how it's not kind of melting down there. So I'm going to use just a little bit more water here. I think that's good. I'm going to try a couple more. I use a wet rag too just to keep everything kind of clean. I want some smaller circles here. Got some little guys. They're way down at the bottom, so I gotta go and grab them. I'm gonna stir them up and I'm gonna start putting them on my cauldron. So we're kind of just 
filling those guys in and I did it with my whisk and brought them out. You kind of want them going up on the edges as well. Got one little guy here. And we can move these around later. It's not a big deal. But these are kind of our fillers. You don't want this even. This should not be even. Your bubbles wouldn't be even. They would just be done. So you can add as many as you want. As few as you want. Whatever you think you need. And I'm going to leave that. I'm going to set my whisk in my water to clean him out in a minute here. And I'm going to start first by pouring these a little bit. And this should be coming nice and smooth. And we could probably add just a little bit more water to this but I think this first layer I'm going to go ahead and keep kind of thicker because I can tell you already I'm going to need a second layer and I'm going to grab my spatula and I'm just going to finish pouring that all out I put that layer on and I'm going to do about half of this again so for as big as this colander was, I could have almost used a whole tube of, of our silicone caulk. And just so you know, I get mine at Walmart. It's under $2. So you can't beat that. All right. So I think I got enough. I'm going to water it down, color it, just like I did last time. Okay, we've got the second batch whipped up. And what I also want to do is start getting this paper plate covered up as well. And I'm going to get my piece of cardboard put it under the bottom. If you're doing a smaller one and you can use a paper plate, that's great. Or wax paper or whatever you have to do. So we're just going to slide that under just in case it starts to leak here. And I almost could have gone just a little bit wetter. And I think I'm going to do that. And I'm going to also put it into a um, frosting bag. And I like to move this around once it starts dripping. Because when you have it drip and then you can move it where it's kind of clean. Make sure you've removed any of your thumbprints or anything. And just playing with this. And having fun making it your way. That is just what we want to do. Hopefully I didn't get this one too watery this time. Pour it around a little bit more here. Cover up all the black, everything on the paper plates. This is probably about perfect for going off the edges. Now that's going fine without putting it into the baggie. So if you want to do it that way, then go ahead. If it's easier to put it in a frosting, just cut the tip of it off. And if you want it thicker, make it thicker. You know, just do it your way. That's the one thing I always try to tell people is don't worry about doing it exactly like somebody else. Do it your way. Make it your own. We just want to make sure we have all of that paper plate covered up. And that's starting to look really great. We want to make sure that we have it on the side. You might not like as much of it dripping. And I put more of the um, bubbles in this one because I had a larger part than the other one. And 
look at it from all angles because I've had problems with my bubbles and you don't realize that they're showing until you're done with it and you see a part that you kind of missed and we can change it with our color with our colors that we're going to add to it if you decide that you want to do that you also could just do just the glitter so I'm going to clean this mess up I'm going to go wash this out this is something that you want to scrape out as much as possible you really don't want to put a full anything of this down the drain but it does clean up with water really nice okay I'm gonna start out with a little bit of glitter and this is just a green I'm gonna do my three big bubbles first and I found out that it really kinda helped to use a fine black on them it just kinda help make them pop so we're gonna do a little bit of black to kind of gave it that dirty feeling dark feeling there and then I'm also going to use little octagon greens and that's just gonna kind of highlight the top okay and see so you can tell I have the three big ones mainly that I have those little guys and I added way more on this one than I did the last time around and I'm going to kind of just hit these with kind of the lime green and like I said my batter ended up being thinner that I pulled over the edges so I got a lot more over the edges you might like less or you might like more that's really going to be a personal opinion I'm also going to put some white kind of where the highlights would be it's just some real fine white and you could use just this and not do any of the coloring only I think the coloring really adds to it but the glitter is really cool too if my stuff was just a little bit thicker you wouldn't quite see the paper plate quite as much we'll see if we can kind of hide that with some of our colors so I'm going to use um, a silver we're using Adirondack um, alcohol inks you find these in your scrapbook section they're usually in a three pack and um, this is um, the silver this is what they call the mixative and you can add and I also have like a pearl mixative but that really what kind of gives the um, bubbles their life and shape so you're gonna really see a big difference I'm gonna start with botanical I'm gonna go a little bit lighter because this green is a little bit lighter and we're just going to kind of move it around now alcohol the cool things about alcohol is they spread out and bleed really well so that's why people like to use alcohol over different kinds of brands isn't that cool we're already kind of getting that kind of bubble leaf look so that's what's neat about it And you can put as much or as little. Kind of put some in there. The silver, I really like it. Gives it the highlight. It's thicker. You don't want to use as much. And what you also can do is move that around a little bit with a toothpick or popsicle stick. Let me grab one here. Now you kind of want to move it right when you put it on. You don't want to really pick up the bottom layers very much at all. You're just kind of moving that around and you also can use a little bit of alcohol this is 91 percent rubbing alcohol and what that does is that makes that 
fan out even a little bit more. Again, it makes it give that real bubbly type of feel to it. So I'm going to use some pearl on our edges here just to highlight it just a little bit. And I didn't have that mixed well enough. So we're just going to put some there. And just play with it. You may want some darker, you want some lighter. That's going to be up to you. And then I'm also going to take some and put it down the front and the sides as well. And I'm going to do it like in the dark green. And it doesn't have to be everyone. Kind of make it go there. And again, I'm going to squirt it a little bit and see how that totally changes it with the squirt. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of silver, not in every one again, just a little bit here and there. You also could use the blending solution if you wanted instead of the alcohol which is in the same section. And I'm going to go ahead and finish that up all the way around. And another idea, like I did on the little purple one, if you had hands or foot and you would kind of want to sink your top a little bit lower, you could put hands and feet and stuff like that, skulls and different things to make it kind of spooky. But there is no right or wrong. Just just play with it and have fun. I've gone around to make sure we've kind of highlighted the three main bubbles and we've kind of oohed and gooed. The one thing I want to say is don't use so much alcohol that it gets wet and soupy because then you will get some cracking in. If you do, it's no big deal. It's okay. But that's one thing to just kind of be aware of. This is going to take a couple days to dry. It's going to depend on a lot of things. How hot it is, if you want to set it outside in the sun, you could do that. How humid it is. So there's a lot of variables on how fast it will dry. And once I think this is done dripping, I'm going to pick it up and move it to another section. And you can add our little green lights to it. There's a bunch of fun things you can do. We've got our other little one over here, and I've put him up on a candle holder so that he really shows up very well, and it lifts it up. You could even put a wreath around the bottom. There's just all kinds of fun things to play with and do to make it your own. The one last thing you want to do is once it's come really, really, really dry, and you can put it out and let it be a decoration before you do this, but you want to make sure if you're going to use it for years to come that we're going to go ahead and use some um, varnish on it to keep it sealed and color and everything in. And you could use Krylon, you could use Rust-Oleum, whatever you want to use. I would try to find something that's maybe non-yellowing. And I might do satin or gloss on the top. And then I would probably do maybe matte because this is matte or maybe satin on the sides here and you I would probably do this a little bit more than we do here but you just want to hold your color protect your color for years to come and do a couple of coats you want to do it lighter because you do have the alcohol inks if they run it's not a big deal on this project because that's what it's kind of made to do um, but then just do a couple light coats and then a couple of heavier coats and that should help hold your colors for years to come and maybe if you have any problems with critters help them keep them out of it as well 
Another thing you can do is just add some little mini lights and we've just thrown those in. We do have those at MiriamJoy.com so it looks like it's kind of bubbling there. But there's so many things you can do or change or make a different colors. So just have fun with it. Come on over to MiriamJoy.com where we have like our little light sets and all kinds of different craft items that you'll always be having lots of fun with. Thank you and have a safe and happy Halloween.